we're good. Good morning, everybody. How are you? I love the early risers on Sunday morning here to join us at the Napa Valley Film Festival. And we're so happy to have you back at this gorgeous space at Feast It Forward. I'm Amanda Haas, and I am hosting all of these incredible demos this weekend, and I'm a culinary ambassador for Whole Foods Market. And out of all of the films that we've shown and the demos we've done, I'm so excited about this one. I just, I had an opportunity to see it, and I cannot wait to share it with you. So Phoebe Rubin, the filmmaker, is here, and we would love to show you a clip from the film to kick it off. Let's take a look. Caffeine of sounds and light and then you go in there and you've entered her world. And it really is Chez Jacqueline. Followed by a lemon. Do you have bread in the oven? No, sir. Is that our sneak preview? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, luckily, yes, we get to talk more about it. And I'm so happy. We'll get to talk more about the film and how you even came to make this film, which is so great. But to help bring it to life from inspiration is Chef Daniel Capra from Paula LeDuc Catering. Let's welcome him out. Was that my intro? Welcome, Chef. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> how are you? Great round of applause. Yeah, wow, and a belated a happy birthday, I hear. It was yes, his birthday, birthday yesterday, yesterday, so we're just going to keep celebrating today with I'll take you. a happy birthday if anyone wants to. Yeah, yeah, that. exactly. Right. Well, you're actually cooking for us and something oh, that's complicated, right, I am, right? right? So we're so happy to have you here. And I think if you have seen the film or if you have not had a chance yet, it is the beautiful story of Cafe Jacqueline, this restaurant in San Francisco that's been there for Phoebe 40 39 years, and Jacqueline is now 82 and makes every single souffle that she serves in her restaurant. It is That's remarkable. Incredible. And so the fact that Phoebe was able to tell this story in such a magical way, and truly as a filmmaker, you had been patroning her restaurant for years, 20 years, and just wanted an opportunity to share her story with the world. She's the only souffle restaurant in the United States. So when she decides to stop, I think we all think that that is the end of this incredible era. So. We are so excited to see you, yes. Chef, bring it to life. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have a beautiful Minor Family Winery 2017 Napa Valley Chardonnay to start drinking this morning, because why not? And Michelle, we're so excited to have you here, too, the assistant winemaker. So thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, chef, let's kick it off. What kind of a souffle are you going to make? So I am going to make a, a, a cheese souffle, okay. but, but here's the story. So um, <laughs> I have not seen the film. I look forward to seeing it. Great. Um, and I just met Phoebe today, uh -huh. but in the lead up to this, so the folks from Napa Valley Film Festival, they called me and they said, would you be willing to do a, a cooking demo? I said, of course, we'd sure. love to. Sure, no problem. Uh, we have a slot for you Sunday morning. I'd love it. Uh, minor f minor uh, family winery will be there. I said, fantastic. We're going to pair you with a filmmaker. I said, this is just getting better and better. And she said, the film is about souffle. There's a woman that's been making souffles for 40-ish years. Right. And the title is, perf there's perfect in the title. Yes. So I was like, Great, no pressure there. So I'm going to teach you all how to make a perfect souffle. Which a hundred of them at one time, right? And basically, you have one or the other. It either works or it doesn't, right? Exactly. So no pressure. No pressure. So, uh, <laughs> so leading up to this, uh, I made time to, to meet with Madame Jacqueline. Oh, fantastic. Right. Oh, my gosh. She is a fun gal. Amazing, right? Right. So I, I, mean, I only had 20 minutes with her. And by no means do I want to put out there that 20 minutes with this woman, I distilled all of her many years of knowledge mm -hmm. into what you're going to see today. Right. But what I am going to do is um, hopefully dispel a few myths. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you hear souffle and you say, no way. Diff uh, I haven't made away. one since culinary school almost 20 years ago. And you're like, yeah, it's not something we do every day. That's why we leave it to her, right? Right. So I'm making four up here and then my... Uh, my teammates here are making oh. about a hundred. Oh, no pressure. So uh, anyway, <laughs> I spoke with her, and um, when she found out I was doing this, she said, "How many are you making?" I mm -hmm. said, "A hundred. She said, "Oh goodness, you should make a Gruyere souffle." Uh -huh. I said, so I'm doing a take on that, and okay. uh, instead of Gruyere, the, the cheese I'm using is uh, it's delicious. It's called Barely Buzzed. Have uh, any of you ever seen this cheese before? Oh, spectacular! Um, it's out of Utah, mm -hmm. and it's it's essentially like an aged cheddar. But the treatment on the outside, um, they age it with a wash. It's a coffee and lavender wash. I thought, what are you talking about? Luckily, I tried it before, and it works. It works well. Well, coffee is a Coffee and lavender, fruit. right. So, um, so we're using that, um, and we are actually serving them in coffee cups. Oh, that's clever. You don't clever. need the fancy, you know, the su specific souffle dish. Right. You can, as long as it's a flat side, you know, you can have some fun with it. So 
We're going to cover just the basic elements of how to make a souffle. Great. We're going to put a little twist on it, and then we can also talk about different ways that you can put twists on, on it On your at souffle, home. right. So we're going to start. Cheese is a really popular one, I think. You know, I think I love chocolate. I love Gruyere or something cheese. And what I love about this, this texture is a lot like Gruyere. And it's got that depth of flavor that you would find in one. So I just think it's kind of an interesting twist. So what do you start out with for well, the basics of a souffle? So you need something to cook it in. OK. Uh, flat sides, you flat straight sides. sides. Uh, and as a point or as a side note, when I did meet with Jacqueline, I said, I don't expect you to um, give me secret tips. Yeah. I said, but if there's one thing I needed to know, if anyone needed to know about making a souffle, what do you need? And she said, patience. Patience, patience. So, I love that. She's right. So I, I have mean. a tendency to talk very fast, and I move very fast, but I'm very and deliberately going to slow things down a little bit. I'm glad, because you and I share that in common. So right? if one of us slows down, I think we'll be OK. But as <laughs> whether you're making a, a, a salad dressing or a souffle or whatever it is, you want to get your mise en place. You want to make sure you have everything you need first, especially for the souffle, because once it's ready to go in the oven, it, you want to put you it in the oven, boom. and once it's ready to come out, you pull it out and eat it. Right. So uh, I've got my vessel. Um, I need to line the vessel. Uh, we're going to rub it with a little butter. Right. And we have uh, a little bread crumb that we mixed with a little espresso okay. bean. Okay. So we've got, we're tying the coffee together. We get the coffee cup, the coffee on the cheese. And I think the thing that's interesting, too, which it's finally coming back to me after 20 years, you need to create a surface on the sides for the souffle to stick to almost as it, it rises. Up. So it can yeah. climb. If there were nothing on it or were too slippery, it would just fall immediately, right? So the butter and the breadcrumb that you've come up with is going to keep that in place. You know what might be fun? What? Can I bring someone up to, to help me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if volunteer, <they> dare. perhaps? <laughs> I see you looking over here. Do you want to come up and join me? Who is this? Do you know this lovely lady? We've never met before. <laughs> I would love to because I think a lot of us are um, a little bit intimidated. Hi, what's your name? Yoli. Yoli. Hi, Amanda. How are you? So, have Come you ever in. made a souffle before? Uh, yes, many times. Oh, really? good. So then, <laughs> can, I, can I have a volunteer that's never made one? Do you one? work together? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. So, what we're going to do here, why don't you, um, let's see, we're going to take, I'm going to do one and then I'll pass it over to you and you'll do three. So, this is just melted butter. Okay. Um, we are going to just. Brush the that. inside. We don't need to pull it up in the bottom, but once it's brushed, you see it's lined like that. I'm trying to keep it off of the outside. If I mess up and I get butter on the outside, I can wipe it off. And then I have here, these are breadcrumbs that we toasted with some of this uh, freshly ground espresso beans. So I'm just going to put... That's going to look beautiful, too. Right? These are the little chef tricks where it's like, that's all you did, and it's going to be beautiful. So we're just going to put some in here and then kind of roll Let it like it that. Let it fall out and let it fall out. So it gets all the way up the sides. So, and then we'll put it on this tray here. Can I so show I'll them let how you gorgeous that is? You'll see it when you get to eat your own individual ones, but isn't that a clever way to coat it so it's not just boring looking, and then you're gonna get that crunch from the espresso. That's all you, you got three left here. Um, yeah, so it's funny, so what's amazing about souffle, you know, I'm kind of a science geek, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this is one of the most uh, technical um, preparations you can make, sort of. Um, so the science of the egg, mm -hmm. the magic of the egg, what is an egg? There's a shell, there's a yolk, there's a white. We want to separate those. Right. Um, and we want to cream the yolk, which we'll do together. And then we want to uh, really finely, you know, we want to whip the whites. Right. And generate a lot of air within that protein structure. Because what's going to happen is, uh, what happens when air gets, gets hot? It, it rises and yeah. it expands. Yeah. So the heat in the oven, it's going to, fill those bubbles up like a hot air balloon. They're going to slowly rise, and then the proteins are going to set, and then Boom. you're ready to enjoy. Magic. Right. Crazy. And you know, on that note, I think it's so interesting. I had a chance to speak with Phoebe, the filmmaker before this, and I said, how did you d decide to make this film? And you had just, know, just been going there later. twice a year for a really long time and loving her food, right? So what are the ones that you have become used to having always when you go to Cafe Jacqueline? Well, the basic uh, cheese with the Gruyere mm -hmm. that she uses um, in season, because everything is seasonal. Okay. So in season, the asparagus is really, really oh, delicious. Oh, well, me? I've never had one with asparagus. It's really good. Incredible. And she does um, prosciutto and she's seafood and a lot of different ones. And then the oh. desserts are all fabulous. Yeah. My favorite is the Grand Meunier. Oh, my gosh. It's so delicious in yes. a souffle. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I also loved in the story that she's had a server who's worked there for how many years? She, for now, 25 years, Matthew. And um, they have this beautiful relationship where 
she loves to be read to, yeah. and he loves to read, and they both love the classics. And so every night after the, everyone is left, after loved, service, they're closing down and cleaning up, and he sits in the kitchen and reads to and her. And he reads. And it they've is. read. They've read everything. They've read all of Jane Austen. And it's incredible. It, uh, Dickens and just everything. And so that's really. Dear. I don't think I'm giving away the whole film by sharing that piece. But if who said they had a chance to see it? Yeah, and is it showing again this no, weekend? That no, was it? last night was the last screening. Okay, but yeah. hopefully there will be other ways for people to I see it. I hope so. Yeah. I'm working on that. I yeah. think just the storytelling <laughs> and having an opportunity to simply, you just wanted to make this story about her and preserve it for no other reason. Well, she's the only strictly souffle restaurant in America, and yeah. she is a gem. Yeah. She's um, a really special, lovely, original, completely original. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's see if we can move on with the steps yeah, so to her recipe next step, and see so if we can make our own magic here. We've done an amazing job lining our nice coffee cups. <laughs> now we have to going. separate the eggs. Okay. Uh, we want uh, yolks in one bowl and whites in the other. I might pour I'm might i just going to keep drinking my Chardonnay while well, there you, you do that. And we'll talk about why this is going to be such a good pairing in a minute. So obviously um, we want to crack on a flat service okay. um, uh, when we separate. And the, the key is not to get any yolk in the white because it inhibits the rise of the So uh, you're doing what I would do and use separate bowls instead of being so bold to just try to do it yourself because you mess one up and then you've got to start all over and you waste the eggs, right? No pressure. I was just going to say sorry. I just put a little pressure on, on you, chef. So you'll separate it. Voila. One, Voila. One down. Yep. Great success so far. <laughs> so far. I'm going to do two and you'll do two. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Don't worry. If we mess up, we have some already. It's okay. okay. They already made them for everybody. I should point out, too, we've been cooking on these monogram induction surfaces and then this oven that you've used to make the souffle that's got the double doors like a restaurant. Look at that. It, it hasn't let us down yet, so I think we'll be got really happy with there. your results. But it didn't crack. No. Oh, my gosh. See, you rescued that. You you're, you're braver than I am. I would be nervous. using another bowl because I don't trust myself. So, incredible. Down. Okay. Two you more. Good with this? You want to try that? Okay. Of course, fine. Amazing. It's a great, great question. question. Yes. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that. Yes, uh, room temperature is is best for what we're doing. That's a good question too. Um, I I pulled them out this morning. They they sat out just in the sun here. Um, you know what I'll tend to do if I'm in a rush because it is a bit. This is more like baking. There's such a science to it. But I'll take if eggs out of the fridge and put them in a little bit of warm <laughs> water and just let them sit for 30 minutes to an hour till the shell doesn't feel cold anymore. That's Perfect. how I cheat it. But who knows if that's right? That yeah, exactly. Quick, right behind So, you. okay. Well, right. um, you're working on the eggs. I wanted to ask Michelle as well what you think of the Chardonnay pairing with this cheese that is so complex. Um, I think it's a... Uh, it pairs really well. Mm -hmm. um, Chardonnay especially is known for having a creaminess and maybe a nuttiness that goes really well with cheese, especially mm -hmm. cheeses like Gruyere. Um, and yeah, I'm really nice liking it. It's so far, so good. Right? Yeah. Um, and I, we were talking the other day about pairings, how you can kind of lean in to similar mm -hmm. flavors or you contrast so much. But I kind of like the rich wine with the rich mm -hmm. souffle. Are you a fan of that combo? Yeah, absolutely. I think they definitely kind of build on each other because cheese and Chardonnay bo both kind of share a lot of flavor, um, you know, components that, that really just kind of tend to um, amplify each other. Yeah, it's nice. It's terrific. Okay, so I see you all, you're gonna beat the egg yolks. Yes, so we are, yeah, we're creaming the yolks. Okay. And thankfully, um, you know, either one of us could do this by hand. Yes. But, but thankfully with the, the Cuisinart hand mixer here, just kind of taking that uh, pressure off because your forearms can sort of cramp up. They you, sure can, and if you're Jacqueline, <laughs> I don't know how many she's making a night. Do oh, you she, know? Uh, she's probably, sir, she, the, usually the dining room, which is only nine tables. Yeah. Um, Turns over twice. Okay. Perfect. And so at each table there are four or two, and occasionally there are six. And I don't know how she does because it because she's doing she's, sweet and savory. She's doing sweet and savory. I, if we do the math, she's probably making at least a hundred a night. Am I crazy? No, probably. She could. She, she could, could in one night. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She has um, a beautiful bowl, which is I don't know if you saw it. That's 150 years old. That bowl, and that bowl used to be used to birth children. And it's got this extraordinary history, and wow. that was of her big purchase when she opened the restaurant 
is that bowl. And so in the beginning of the week, the bowl is stacked all the way to the top with eggs. And then by the end of the week, there's only a few left. And that's I saw a ritual the, every week. Yeah. That's incredible. It's an amazing yeah. story. I also love, too, that you get to share part of her life. And everybody thought she was crazy when she wanted to start this, right? They just said, there's no way you can do this. And, and then people have tried to convince her not to keep making the souffles. And she, she was not going to stop. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's just her not part of her plan. This not is, at all. This is her life. She truly loves what she does. It's incredible. Yeah. If we could all be so lucky, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So, we've got our egg whites. Okay, so this is critical. This is critical. <laughs> uh, and to the egg whites, I'm going to add a little potassium hydrogen tartrate, also known as cream of tartar. I was going to say, that sounds really fancy. <laughs> uh, Very but it's, exciting. A, it's naturally, um, it's, it's, it occurs in the winemaking process. So, we're kind of tying a Napa Valley into the process, Dang. but it helps stabilize your whites as they, as they rise. And so can you do it without? Do you, you know? can. Yeah. yeah. You don't need that, but security. We like that. Exactly. And if you've never done it before, I'd take the security route. And so what you want to do is, you, we actually, we're going to start kind of slow. Okay. Because we, we want many, many, many small bubbles. Okay. We don't want to start and crank it and have all these big pockets. We want a nice, even... Um, Got it. So start slowly, again, against our nature, I think. Right. <laughs> Just crank we it up. We want it now. <laughs> and but let it, it incorporate a, a some of that air. Enjoy your different, mi your minor family. Here. So that's what we do while we wait for our uh, eggs to whip. We just drink our Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, it's not a bad problem. We started at like 10 yesterday morning as well. And I woke up today thinking, oh, got to do it again. <laughs> well, one last time here. So this, I think, if I remember, you could refrigerate this and make this yes. base in advance. So if you were entertaining, which it's so tricky when you're trying to serve these at the last minute, you could do all of this, bring it out, and at the last minute, combine your eggs and get them in the oven? Yes. Okay. I'm sure uh, Madame Jacqueline might, might frown upon that. I don't yeah. know if she does it in the restaurant, but yeah, there's different tricks like that. You can put it in there, you know, I'd say 30 minutes or so. Okay. Um, and uh, you should be fine. Okay, these are already starting to aerate really well. They are. You can just see the volume. And so I can't surprising how quiet this is. It is very quiet. Very quiet. This is Cuisinart? Yes. Love it. Yes, it is. It's gorgeous. So, um, yeah, so in here, so many people, when they make their souffle, they start with like, more like a bechamel base. Uh huh. Um, and so the recipe today, I don't like to use the word easy, but it's, it's less difficult than, than some of the others. Because right here, this is just yolks and cheese. Well, it's funny, I am gluten free, not by choice. And so I was disappointed to think I'm not going to be able to have this, but you're telling me that I read the base. that about you. And so <laughs> like, in preparation no. for that, we uh, okay, but it's this. interesting you could do it because I was going to ask, could you do rice flour or something else on the mm. sides of it or like a gluten free panko crumb to put on top. So you're encouraging me. Well, I did line these unfortunately with some bread crumbs, okay. but um, I but bet yeah. it, it's just good to know if I wanted to do it myself that I could. Right, and again, that, that's another, uh, coming back to like different tricks and pointers you can do on your own. Right. So, like if this is a, uh, you know, a dessert souffle, line it with butter, um, sugar. Sugar, cocoa powder. Cocoa powder. I, I mean, you can have any sort of fun. You just want something, like, like you were saying, that the, uh, the base to, to cling on to as it rises. Did I see she does strawberry when they're in season as well? And so, like, even those freeze-dried, those powdered strawberries that are so delicious, you could line it with that and it would be gorgeous. Lovely. Be amazing. All right, so we are just about there. Okay, so Can't what are you looking it, for? Um, peaks? Peaks, and um, once the shine goes away, mm -hmm. it's kind of another uh, signal that, okay. it's, that it's ready. Is that the wine train coming by? I'm like, they're missing out. Whoever's uh -huh. on that, they should be right here. <laughs> we have the better setup this weekend. All right, so let's take a look when, when, uh, when we turn this off. Okay. Yeah, look at that. They look pretty. So they're holding a peak and dry, almost. Yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous. Can they? Can you show them? Where's my yeah. camera guy? I know. We need that. We need an overhead mirror. How does we that work? Can you see that? Year. Gorgeous. Yep. There they are. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. So then we're not just going to throw that in there and mix it around. We're okay. going to slowly incorporate a little bit of the white into the yolk and cheese mixture. And if you were to do it all at once, it's just harder to get them to truly combine. Right, and right. So, so now we're just gonna kinda do a folding um, motion. Okay. Now, you can see how much volume we've increased, uh, well, with the yolk as well, but mm -hmm. with the white, we're, we are gonna lose some of that by, by mixing it, but those, those, don't worry, that, that air, those bubbles are still in there. Okay. Um, See, this is always the scary part for people, I think. It's like you're looking for those visual cues to know you're doing it right. And so I think like on this first batch, you're going to see that it all co comes together and it does lose some volume, but don't fret. 
Right, and you know, I was always, you know, I, I was under the impression you have to everything's just so very delicate. You have to. Right. I mean, you do have to be careful, but but you know, it's not baby hands on these. Uh, once you're mixing in here, I think you the, can be a little the harder part is just knowing that once they go in the oven, you just can't touch it. You can't be opening and closing and affecting the heat of the oven that much, right? You have to trust that you're doing steady, it right. Steady variables. You want yes. to keep things steady. Right. So, well, it's looking good. All right. I think you know what you're doing, chef. I spent time <laughs> with, uh, with the madam, that's why. <laughs> So great. So again, she what loves Gruyere. I think that this cheese will be delicious in it, but you could certainly do some other cheeses as well, but more harder cheeses over like something soft and gooey. Definitely. Right, you don't Definitely. want a very melty cheese when you're doing this. And you know, we also on the top of these, have the tasters gone out? Have we, yeah. Did we, you um, all get to try them? Yeah, delicious. Um, thank you. And then uh, we, we also put a little grated cheese on top oh, as well. Oh, delicious. That sounds great. Where did my little knife go? Your, I saw your knife. I don't think I saw ah. it. Oh, there it is. Watch her. What did you think of the combination of the souffle with the Chardonnay? It's nice. I feel like it's brunch. <laughs> it's a really good brunch idea. So good. And thank you I, for if that. If anyone wants to come up here and just taste the cheese, I can uh, give you a little... I would sample love that. Here. We were doing giveaways yesterday on um, you could eat from the stage. Thank you. If you could remember something that Chef shared, it's like what one thing about souffle should oh, we know? Then, then let's do that. Yes. <laughs> oh, two she pieces? wants two pieces. If you tell us what we need to remember to make a good souffle. Cheese? You need cheese? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a wrong answer. Give me the cheese. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna put the final bit of white, and then you know what? We are gonna go. It is in Sunday the morning. Everyone's tired and been having. I'll even really give you this time. bigger rubber spatula. You out. Well, you know what? You're bringing up a good point, too, because to, com um, to combine it like that, I like to use a spoonula or a spatula like you have. I think it just cuts into it a little bit easier, right? Yeah, absolutely. Metal, not so much. Always choose the right tool for the job is what they say. Absolutely. So I love, this is what we're going to do. Once you put these in the oven, four people get to win right. the finished product. <laughs> what do you think? So I want to hear four points, four things you need to know about making a souffle or anything you've learned. I Anyone want to go for it? Yes, one. Perfect. Mm. I just keep going with confidence. I love that answer. Yeah. Okay, yes. one, you're our first souffle. Two, yellow jacket behind you. Um, Bingo. Fantastic. Three, right here. And then I'll get the bag. Look at this. Nice. And four way in the back, I saw two. Firm cheese. I, th I think right, those so are all acceptable answers to get your own souffle out with additional wine as well, I might add. I like those answers. Those are really good. So, Chef, once you get these done and you pop them in the oven, no pressure to cook no, these now. No. <laughs> I don't even know if you were going to bake these off. Um, how long do these take? Um, so, Michelle, how did the, the taste, how long did those do? So the, the teeny ones were seven. Okay. So um, my best guess for this, I'd probably shoot for, uh, I'll check them at 10. Okay. Uh, and is this something you would do on convection? Because one of the things I love about these ovens is they have a convection setting, and I use it for everything. But, well, is that too tricky with souffle? Uh, once it starts to rise with the convection, I found with the convection, it can just mm. kind of blow what you've risen out of the way. So we, we have the fan off. Luckily, with these ovens, you can... You can select to turn the fan on, off. That's good to know. Anything. Okay, so uh, noted on that part. I won't try my favorite speed up trick at home on a souffle. Okay, so they're about halfway, two thirds full. No, two thirds full. I think there's nothing more beautiful when it gets to the oh, top and it kind of just sinks indeed. a little bit, right? Oh, you know what? I need to what save. Else do you I want need to put do? a little more cheese on top. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. Why not? Delicious. Great. And then. Uh, when, when, uh, when they came out of the oven, we did have a little smoked uh, Marshall Farms honey here that we... Oh, I tried this earlier, and I think that's another thing. I would never think to put something smoked like this with these flavors. And is that an okay combination for the wine, too? Absolutely, because when we age Chardonnay in barrel, the barrels are toasted on the inside, so that brings a toastiness into the wine as well. It's just like this incredible marriage of flavors, which is which is pretty magical. So when you, while you finish this up, I think I have one question for Phoebe because I found it so interesting. She's made all kinds of documentaries over the years and this was just one film that you just needed to tell her story. And if there's one thing we, we could take away from Jacqueline, what would it be? And with your beautiful film. Um, I, I would say just stay as close to your passion as you can. And um, you keep the time. Right. I, I think that's what she did. At first, she thought, 
when she decided to open it, she thought she would open a flower shop, and then she thought she might open some other businesses, and people said to her, a souffle restaurant, no, that's not going to work. That isn't going to happen, but no, that's what funny. she loved. Right. And so she just trusted it. She did. She just trusted her own knowing and passion, and, and then here she is, 40, 39 years later. It's so, and it kind of speaks to that thing of if you know what you want to do, you'll be successful, right? That's right? She went against everyone telling her she couldn't have a restaurant in the city. She would be crazy to do souffles. Right. She can't depend on herself. And that's right. Here she is still right. living it. In the film, she said, a lot of people said, why don't you just play golf or do something <laughs> like that? <laughs> So you know, she just followed her heart. Is she what did. she did. She really did. Yeah. Oh my gosh! She that's told me amazing. she plans to retire in 2020. In 2020? Yeah. Well, you better go so soon. So get in there while you can. It's not. It's a. It's a special occasion place too. And you shared so. So many people go there to get engaged or celebrate these big moments in life. Because she's got 10 tables, right? You can't. She's only going to take so many people. So that's actually really good to know. And, and I've not been in. Is it correct? That she brings you a rose at the end of the meal or something like this? I don't know. It just depends. There are, there's always a rose on every table, oh. and so she always encourages someone to take it. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I love it. It's so sweet. Does anyone have any questions about the film or the cooking? Yes? If you're making a souffle in a standard size souffle dish, is there anything you would do differently versus the smaller souffle That's a great question. Um, give it more time. Yes. Um, uh, you use the baby hands with the bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because there's there's the volume, the sheer volume of what you're doing. The, the center can kind of fall, right. but again, the same principles, um, and you, you you fill it two thirds way. Um, you just follow the same basic principles, and and you should be fine. Absolutely, yeah. It's time, right? It's just giving it more time, and then you get better at it too, right? I think that we learn visually how to look for cues as well, but. I did have to make a couple before I felt confident that I knew what I was doing. You have to be, you have to embrace fa failure. That, that's the, those are the steps to getting to doing something successful. You have to be willing to have, mess up a couple, and, and that, that, then you know what you're looking for. And eat your mistakes. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with eating souffles that didn't quite work out. My kids don't complain. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, while we wait for these to cook, I really want to thank all of you for being here. Are there any other questions before thank I thank our help. great sponsors? Yes. Did she have a different profession before she opened the restaurant? She, um, she was a wife and a mother. And um, I think that's mostly what she did. Um, yes, and then her life changed and she decided to change also. Yeah. Courageous. Mm -hmm. And her son is the one who really encouraged her to do this. You said you'd been asking her for years yes. to do a, a film and right. she just kept saying. She's shy and she's very private. And um, she, uh, it took a little while, it took some years of convincing, but um, her son finally said, well, you should do that, Mom. You're the only person like this in America. You should do this. And so she has two. She has two? Yes. That's so sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound like anybody else is going to carry on this tradition when she decides to stop. No, they both have either prof uh, other professions, and right. they're just not interested. No. They used to work in the restaurant when they were kids. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were raised in it, yeah. right? Yeah. Incredible. Can you imagine that? No, I can't. I can't imagine getting souffle every day if you wanted it. Spoiled. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, pretty amazing. Any other questions? And for the winemaker as well, for Michelle. Yes. Mm -hmm. How can you? How do you get the barely buzz cheese online? Let me online guess. Online yeah. and um, Whole Foods uh, su supplied us with everything we needed today. So um, amazing! They, they have access to it. The, uh, the honey the we smoked honey. Our, ourselves in, in our kitchen in, in Emeryville. That's um, brilliant. But you know. Unsmoked honey is just as delicious, you know. We just and I think there are some smoked honeys. Like uh, Jacobson Salt now has a honey line that's beautiful. It's called Be Local, and I think he smokes some of, some of them. So you'd probably find those at Whole Foods as well. They do such a great job of carrying some of those unique items that we can find all the oh, time indeed. now. So that's so great. Any other questions for us this morning? And there's the more four cheese of you. Up here I was going to say there's more cheese to try. The four of you who win your own souffles, please come up and enjoy those. And I just want to invite all of you to really enjoy what all of our sponsors have put together for you. So from these gorgeous monogram appliances, we've been cooking steaks in eight minutes at the end of the day to show everybody this amazing speed oven. And we've got Cuisinart. And then if you look around, so many other amazing sponsors. We've got Whole Foods Market, Minor Family Winery. Thank you for keeping us happy all weekend long. 
And then we've also got Wanderlux sponsoring this gorgeous VIP area where you can go in the sauna, you can try the oxygen. They've just got all of these really amazing interactive experiences for us. And as you walk out, you'll see Hangar One and Glenn Fittick. It just, the fun doesn't stop here today. So I want to thank you all for being a part of this this morning. And thank you so much for sharing this beautiful story with us. I really appreciate it, Phoebe. And Chef, thank you. Oh, dude, my pleasure. You did a great job. Take a peek. Let's see. I'm not going to be the one to open it up and make uh, a How long has it been in there? That's for sure. Four, uh, okay, Four right. minutes left. We're well, anyone who wants to come up, try some cheese, ask questions if you didn't want to ask in a big crowd. One more question. Okay, so how is, what's the surefire way to know that it's finished? I mean, everybody's temperature oven is different. It's a great point, too. Every oven's different. You know, w um, great question. You can't poke you can't it, poke but um, it. <laughs> you'll see you'll see that it has risen, and there will be color on top. You can, you know, not not shake it. You can shimmy it just a little bit, and like cheesecake almost. You can kind of like yes, exactly. And I think you can tell too that the whites look a little baked on the outside, like versus raw. You know, like when they combine with those other ingredients, you can kind of see that they've mm -hmm. got almost like a crust starting. And before. when these come out, you, you're welcome to come on up and get a closer look and kind of see how that is. Yeah, um, it's some. It's part of it's just intuition too. You you just get to know. Right. Exactly. Mm. Yes, you've got a question as well. Come on up. Oh yes, please. I love it. Don't be shy. I have a reservation for the restaurant on Wednesday. I'm here from India. She's here from India and going to the restaurant on Wednesday. Wow. Oh, that's so fantastic. Welcome. We're so happy to have you. And that's so great that you thought to do that. That's amazing. Well, enjoy the experience. I haven't even been yet. So um, get it while you can, right? Thank you, everyone. We really encourage you to come up and talk with us. Thanks for being here. Great job. Fun, fun, fun.